What do I do when I need to go poop? <laughs> and I'm on the side of the road, like I am right now. Well, the reason I decided to answer that question is not just because I need to go poop right now, but because I actually have diarrhea. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, how idyllic of a scene this is for people that see me out here having this wonderful time, or all the people out there who are imagining like, Man, every day he's got to find somewhere to go poop. Well, I don't just have to find somewhere to go poop once today. It's like, I got to continuously look for a place to poop. And sometimes it's a couple miles, or at least a half mile or mile before I find a spot. So imagine out there that you have diarrhea, <laughs> which probably all of you have experienced. And most of you, when you have diarrhea, you just gotta walk to the next room to go to the toilet. Well, I gotta hold it in for like a half mile or a mile. And it's, it's, actually, it's actually been a kind of painful experience. And so this is just a reality of the experience. And I'm sharing it because primarily I just wanted to take you along for this unique little aspect of life. Um, because I know it's the type of thing that most people probably do wonder, but very few people will ever actually answer. <laughs> so I am interested in answering the questions that are the most, that you would be like most embarrassed to ask or you think I wouldn't want to answer. And I invite you to ask me those questions. Why? Because what I'm into is deeply analyzing life. And the way that we stay sort of delusional and honestly separate is if we don't ask the deep questions. And that's the deeper reason why I'm willing to talk to you about something that would otherwise be very embarrassing and do it with a level of like comfort and confidence. Like here I am talking about where I'm gonna go poop, something that most people honestly would be terrified to be, you know, having to do like poop on the side of the road. So on that note, I've just come to a spot I'm gonna keep this location disclosed, but I've got my Hori Hori, which is a type of garden knife. I have it wrapped in cloth. And I will have you know The poop never touches this knife because I dig the hole with it and then I bury the hole and the, the knife does not have poop on it. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> so, complete transparency. Occasionally you poop on yourself. I mean, it happens. We've all done it. We've all done it, probably. Yes, we all have because we were all kids once and we'll all grow old once. And we all have it happen occasionally in between as well. And it's fine, it's fine. It's not gonna hurt us, it's not gonna kill us to talk about it. So this is why I'm talking about poop. This is why I've got my shovel uh, and I am heading to the woods and this part of the experience I am not taking you in on. Now, Forrest Gump is an inspiration of mine and the movie is my favorite of absolutely all times. And there's a scene where he steps on poop and someone says, whoa, you just stepped in a giant pile of dog. And he says, it happens. <laughs> and he's talking about poop. What, poop happens? Or as some would say, S-H-I-T. And so it happens. And you know what just happened? I may have gotten a little bit of poop on the shovel and I definitely, accidentally got some on me. Whew. Which brings me to my very last point. Over the next few months, I am going to be 
sharing all of the things that I have been embarrassed about, all the things that I've been holding back, all the things that I've uh, guarded or protected. I'm going to be releasing all of it. And some of it's, you know, fun, goofy stuff like this. And some of it's the stuff that I've been really mourning, you know, for a long time and have really want, I really want to share um, to get into a to get into a deeper state of truth, to get into a, a higher state of integrity, to um, to heal, um, to heal with others, and to to yeah, let go uh, and to shed the things no, that no longer serve. And um, so that's what I'm going to be doing over the next few months. And I invite you to uh, hear with me. Um, by the time I get to Los Angeles, I'm going to have released at all um, by writing and by video and publicly so I'm not I'm seriously not going to be hiding anything I want to live in complete transparency radical radical transparency and I want to experiment with the concept of having yeah like I said absolutely nothing to guard or nothing to hide and what that can do for me as a, a servant to, to humanity I believe that's uh, that's integrity, you know, that's truth, and that's what I want. And so this is quite the extreme measure that I'm going through, and I'm not saying that others have to go through this, but it's my personal experiment with what happens to the mind, because I want I want to go deeper. I want to see what happens to a mind that has nothing to hide. What happens to a mind that has nothing to guard? Does it enter a higher state of universal love? I think so, but I don't know, I'll find out. And does it guide you into a feeling of non-attachment? I think so. Does it help you to have a deeper connection with everything? I, I think so. Does it, does it tear down, uh, dissolve the separation? I think it will. And I believe that separation is at the heart of our demise as a humanity. Um, I believe that it's separation, the belief that we're separate, that is one of our main threats to ceasing to exist. Like, I think it's a really, and I think it's our source of destruction, destruction to earth. I think it's our source of destruction to others, to people, to the planet, to the plants and animals we share the earth with. I think separation is, is, is at the you know, at the heart of it. And so what at the heart is communication and connection and community. That and that and I feel like having nothing to hide it would just create a sense of connection unlike before with myself and with others. I I want people to know I'm a safe human being to be with and my goal is to be a leader. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi is the person who has influenced me more than anyone and and I'm reading his works and I'm following in his path um, to the best of my ability. I'm still a young guy um, and I still have a lot of work to do as far as coming into the integrity that I want to, but that's what I'm doing. And uh, he said in the end of his life that there was nothing he knew that the public didn't know, that basically for the last 13 years of his life, Everything he did was for the service of the people and that's where I want to get to and I'm far from that I'm you know, I'm far from that, but that's my goal is to be of service. It's been for a long time and so uh, you know also Mahatma Gandhi chose a path of Brahmachari or you know non non sex no romance in that regard, but instead a romance with all of humanity but, You know, that's what I a deep deep love for everything and I believe that that's the path for me as well. And I'm 20 months in after deciding that I was gonna do a year of practicing love of everything rather than love of one individual. And uh, I committed to another two years till I'm 40, so it'll end up being four years. And then we'll see what happens after that. But these are the experiments. And I have to say, I've been experimenting with these you know, these universal truths, or you, you could call them truths, or you could say that they're not true, whatever you want to call them. But I'm going to say these are in the realm of what I consider to be sort of universal truths, 
love being one of them. And I'm experimenting with them and I have to say that um, it's been life transforma life transforming incredibly over the last three years of practicing nonviolent communication, um, practicing Vipassana, which is 10 day silence meditations, practicing silence, practicing wholeness and completeness within. You know, you, you haven't seen as many of my videos lately of like, you know, I live in a tiny house or here's all the possessions that I own or, or uh, I'm growing and foraging all my food, but I am on a big adventure, just as big as those. Um, but it is much more inward and but it is incredibly transformational and my intention is to keep doing that and my intention is to embark on some of the more the, the most radical experiments that I could possibly come up with as a way of uh, testing my mind and growing um, and this is an example what I just shared about coming into complete truth and there's others that I am planning to embark on in the months and years ahead as a sense of, for deep observation, deep observation of the mind, my own mind, but doing it in a public way where I am of service with the idea being that if I can so deeply analyze my mind that the only way if you're in my presence is to see that, that I'm analyzing my mind. Does it stimulate others to analyze their own minds? And my hypothesis is absolutely. Being out there in love creates love. Being out there in critical thought takes criti uh, makes critical thought. Um, and I think one of the tenets of us coming into harmony is to deeply, to go deep inside of ourselves and make sure we are the change we wish to see in the world. And those are, that's the path that I'm following. And so I'm, I'm really happy to be on this path with a lot of you. Uh, I know that a lot of you have been on this journey with me for a long time and we're all growing together. And um, all of us at different rates. And I'm grateful for all of you growing with me and helping me grow, keeping me accountable. You are what keeps me going actually. The reason I'm in integrity is because I have people to be integral for. I'm really uh, grateful for all of you. There's so much more that I could share, but um, I gotta keep walking. <laughs> All right, love y'all. <laughs> One last thing a whole, about the whole knife thing. I just want you to know I have soap and I have water <laughs> and I managed to have impeccable hygiene out here. So don't worry about that. I forgot to answer that at the very beginning and that was kind of why I came back on in the first place. All right, love y'all.